Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love Line, coast to coast. Yep, it is Love Line. I am Adam, that is Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. We can help you. Some 41 will be in here tomorrow night. That's the uh, band whose riff I like so much. Which one's that? Uh, I think Anderson has it somewhere. Yeah, he has nowhere. He okay. doesn't nowhere. Nice. But it'll pop up sometime in the middle of one of my rants uh, before the night is through. We'll, uh, we'll hear the Dr. Drew boogie tonight. Oh. Because we did promise that to yeah. a caller a couple nights ago and then forgot all about it. How'd you remember that? Um... I don't know. Okay. I, I got home that night, and I thought, geez, we're supposed to play that. And then uh, a little bit later the next day, it, it bothered me. That was the Pennywise night. I think we were just glad to have gotten through that. Right. We yeah. were, we were uh, happy to make it out in one piece. But yeah. still, I don't like when someone calls in, wants something, and then we don't do it. Yeah, okay. Unless it's entertainment. Uh, well, we in that never, case, yeah, that's game easy. off. Yeah. Game off. All right. So you ready to go here, Drew? Yeah, let's go. Matt? Yeah. You're 15? Yep. What's up? I was just wondering how you guys felt about premarital sex. Fine. In what way? What do you mean? Uh, well, do you guys say have sex before you're married or just go, um, and go all out? Please. Pretty much everyone does. The guys should. The, the girls shouldn't. Pretty much everyone does. It's relatively unusual that somebody makes it all the way until marriage. Um, we would rather... It, listen, uh, listen, we don't really treat married or unmarried. We just treat uh, whether you're in a relationship. And how old you are. Things are stable. Yeah, it's how stable you are. Whether you're, you're not acting out. out. You're casting a play or not. You know, some people, like they, their relationships are just a sort of a, a play that they've casted to reenact old traumas. But if you're, you know, you're 18, you're in a stable relationship, most countries in the world, at least Western European countries, Western countries, would consider it a normal part of an 18-year-old relationship to grow into a physical relationship. And uh, it could be younger. But also, well, we'd rather you do that than get married at 17 and a half. In order to have sex. Right. Yeah. And, and well, another thing that's clear is that people, their brain development is such that not able to handle the experiences associated with and the decisions associated with having sex before the age of 16. Matt? Yep. You're a virgin? Yes. You're religious? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was kind of asking. I'm, I, I'm pretty religious. I mean, I'll... I've had sexual experiences and things, but... You ought to be ashamed of yourself! What, uh, they're, they're te those were technicalities. What have you had? Well, I, I got a hand job. And oh, it's nice. What was the guy's name? <laughs> no. Uh, it was a girl, actually. I see. True. Never got a hand job in my life. In your life? In my life. Good times. <laughs> yeah, good times. Not for my penis. It's uh, BJ or nothing. Yeah, that's that's my motto that's now. That's usually what you tell them when you meet them? That's right. First date. Hey, Matt? Yeah? Uh, you have a girl now? No, I don't. I was just, I mean, I don't really see it that you need a girl. I mean, you go out to and pick somebody up that's hot, and, you know, you go for it, whatever. Oh, You're Matt. no good. Matt. Now, oh, what, God. What's up with you, Matt? I mean, what, what, I thought on one you hand, were religious. Yeah, I thought you were religious. Well, I am, but, I mean, I'm not like, oh, praise the Lord, thank you. Why, why don't you stay focused on, A, not hurting other people, and B, doing what's healthy. And it doesn't sound like you're going down either of those paths right now, so. Ricky? Yeah. You're 17? Yeah, I was wondering if uh, bong water showed up on a drug test. If you drank it? Yeah, I drank it. Yes, it would. And also, if you spill it on the actual drug test, I think it might Into come the urine. Positive. Yeah, it goes into the urine, sure. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you can eat pot, you can drink pot. I mean, it, it's many ways you can get into your system, and yeah, but then it comes out of you. Bong water doesn't have a ton of weed in it, does it? I don't know. I didn't get high off it. Why'd you drink it then? Well, I was just trying to. Trying, I see. trying to get high. I had nothing else. Why don't you just whack yourself over the head with the bong? You get a little buzz. Well, I, I tried that afterwards. How do you figure if you're getting high, it's not going to show up in your urine? He didn't get high. Yeah, but he was trying to. What, yeah, what was the logic well, he went through? I just walk around trying to. I don't. Do you understand like, my question, Ricky? No. If, Rick, all right, forget the question. Can't you scrape resins like a good 17 year old? No, he doesn't want the drug to show up in a urine test. Yeah, I know that's get, what his get, question is, but I'm saying get, to him, he wants to get high, he's drinking bong water like a retard. Yeah, because it was had the magical high ingredient with nothing that would show up in the urine. Okay. If you're taking something uh, that makes you high, it's going to show up in your urine. All right? That's right, but I didn't get high. Okay, so it won't show up. So what are you oh. testing for? Uh, for a job. 
I see. Shocked. Interesting. Write that down. Job. Uh, what kind of job? Uh, grocery store. They really do that at grocery stores yeah. these days, huh? All right. Yeah. All right. And you have a problem with pot? No. You have a problem getting it, though. That's true. <laughs> well, you, you, you seem to have a problem with it, right? Yeah. You, 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 you have such difficulty giving it up that you can't pass a planned drug test. Well, it's not like he mainlined the bong water, Drew. He just drank it. All right, that's, Ricky, that's you, desperation, you, you, yes, you've learned a valuable lesson, okay? All right. How old was the bong water? Oh, I don't know, a couple weeks. Yeah, God knows what was floating around in there. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so here's the deal. Uh, no more drinking bong water, right? All right. All right, and what about resins, seriously? Don't you guys scrape for those anymore? No. Yeah. I, that sounds like too much work. Oh. Yeah. It's too high. Yeah, why scrape for resins when you can drink right out of the bong? Tina? Yeah. You're 26? Yep. What's up? I need some advice on what I should do with my boyfriend. All right. Uh, first of all, I met him when he was in rehab. He was not working. Um, we started going out. We've been out together for now for about two years. Now, that means... Almost going on three years. Wait a minute. That means you were in rehab, too. No, I wasn't. He was... I used to work at a bar, and <laughs> um, the, where he was staying at, they used to let him out on weekend passes. And, of course, they came to the bar, and that's how I met him. Wait a minute. Addiction rehab? Yeah, he got out of jail early and attended this rehab. Did, didn't they kind of shortened his sentence by going to rehab. Yeah, didn't you think perhaps there was something wrong with him when he was... Going into the bar into the on bar? a weekend pass? Well, I didn't know that he was in rehab. I knew he lived in this house. A bunch of guys lived in this house, and... yeah. And I didn't know there was a rehab until I asked him, I said, what do you guys do here? Because it was, it was run like a business. I yeah, see. and then didn't you say, hey, you're, you're drinking. <laughs> yeah, I knew about that. All right. So mm-hmm. you've been with this guy for two years. Tina's uh-huh. dad has to have been an alcoholic. Was has your, to have been. Was your dad an alcoholic? He was, he was a, my, my dad? Yeah. yeah. Yes, my whole yeah. family. My father's side of the family. Has to be. So what you're looking for is an addict who just... It's so funny. When codependents go out and look for that person, they want them in their contained addiction phase. You know, and if if you were if she, Tina were to take now her boyfriend to treatment, be like just get him back the way he was when he was lurking around outside the rehab drinking. That's the kind of alcoholic guy I want. But um, one thing is he's very hard headed. The current problem we have now is um, he he's on probation, and uh, part of his probation is that he has a full has to have a full time job. What's he on probation for? Drug possession. Hey Tina, huh. are you missing a leg or some teeth <laughs> or grotesquely overweight? What's up with you? You can't just find a regular guy with a regular job who loves you? Is there something something physically wrong with you? I don't think so. Well, no, she has to have an alcoholic, a raging alcoholic like Dad. How about you go to Al-Anon and drop this guy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, don't even... Okay, yeah. there's one more, one more thing. We had a baby. In- no! Oh. I was going to say, if you tell me you guys had a kid, I was going to fly out yeah, to Arizona and a- hit you with a guitar on the head. Kabong! El Kabong! What's that? That's our well. The baby's not the problem. It's just oh, of course not. That, that's an incidental issue. Yeah. Well, no problem there. Listen, that kid. It's a boy you, or girl? You should put him in a wicker basket and send him down the Nile like Moses. He'd have a better chance. Screw balls. All right. So now you got an, someone else to screw up. How about uh, you don't screw the kid up anymore? You get out of this relationship. Hey, here's what you do: go to Al-Anon. We're not going to tell you what to do except go to Al-Anon and you figure it out with a sponsor there. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's what you do. Hey. That's what you do. Tina, mm-hmm. it's, it's not your decision anymore. It's for your kid. You understand? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but You don't have a choice. You listen, go to Al-Anon. Yeah, yeah exactly. It may be as Thank you, you. If you get better in Al-Anon, if you start getting into codependency recovery, he will freak out, and it may actually force him to actually do something, to actually change, and that would be the best thing for your child. Mm-hmm. Not just leaving him so you can go find another alcoholic no, that's to have as a boyfriend, which is what you'll do if you don't go to Al-Anon. Mm-hmm. All right. Al, uh, none. Right, right, Tina? Twelve steps. There you go. Don't, that's it. Enjoy. That's the advice. Enjoy. We'll see you there. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Hey, hey, Tina. Mm. I'm sorry you got crapped on growing up, but that doesn't give you the opportunity or the right to crap on another life, which is your young kid who then becomes society's problem. you got to do the work. You're 26. you got your wits about you. Now start doing your goddamn work, all right? Idiots. Not funny. Ah, screw all you. Roya? Uh, hi. You're 15. Yeah. Um, What's up? My, my friend, 
she's anorexic, and her stepmom knows about it, but her stepmom won't do anything about it. Where's her real mom? Um, I'm not sure. I think she, like, left when she was a kid or something, and her dad died. Oh, so she only has the stepmom? Yeah. Ugh. And her stepmom is just like, well, it's your life, you know. You will learn your lessons yourself or something. Oh, boy. This is, is this your best friend? Oh, it's a really close friend of mine. And uh, hmm. what is she, is she throwing up every day? Well, she just is always on diet pills and oh, she, boy. like, never eats. Why don't you talk to a school counselor about it? Well, I would, but I'm out of school. Oh. Why are you out of school? Well, the summer, right? Oh, oh, oh. You out for the summer? Mm-hmm. Or do you get to go back next semester? Mm-hmm. Oh, next semester? Yeah. School doesn't start until, like, August or September. Right. Next I mean, you didn't, you didn't get thrown out or anything, right? No. You graduated the uh, ninth grade? Yes. Okay. Going on to the tenth? Yep. Good times? Mm-hmm. Okay, now who can she talk to? I'm asking you, Drew. Mom's gonna have to be involved in this. Really? Yeah. Why? How is he gonna? How is he gonna pull it off? Otherwise, unless you want to go to some OA and Overeaters Anonymous type of community meeting. But uh, I, I have you tried talking to the mom? Uh, yeah, I've confronted the mom about it, and her mom is just like, "Oh, it's not my kid. I don't really have to worry about it," or something like that. What? How about you uh, convince her to go to a uh, OA meeting? All right. This suddenly sounds bogus to me. Really? All right. It's not my kid? What does that mean? Well, she's just like, well, I mean, it's not her birth child. She's just... She, she, said, she explicitly said that? This is not... Yeah, I don't well, care. she's an alcoholic. <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, how about get her to Al-Anon then? That's some, Alateen. That's some place she can, she can go get some support and maybe get on the road. Okay. Alateen, you can go with her because you've got some codependency issues yourself. So. Okay. All right? All right? Good time. Thanks for taking my call. Right. Thank you for calling. Okay. All right. Bye. Take care of yourself. Okay. All right. Everyone, go to Al-Anon, Alateen. I think it starts with Al. Alpha Beta. <laughs> what? Albertsons. Go to Al Capone's vault. Al Capone. Alcatraz. <laughs> Nicole? Hi. You're 14? Yeah. What's up, sister? Um, I have a crush on, like, my really good friend. Uh-huh. And I want to get with him so bad. Like, I just want to be his girlfriend, but I don't know how. Mm. Like, get with him. Can you turn down whatever's going on in the background, yeah. please? Yeah. Idiot. Okay, sorry. Okay. She wasn't supposed to hear the idiot. Molly Crew. Sorry. Okay, uh, so Nicole, he he probably isn't into oh, that Drew. kind of relationship. Don't burst your bubble. Maybe he is. Well, he has a girlfriend right now. Yeah. I mean, it's not you, right? Right. Therefore, he's not into that kind of relationship. <laughs> well, not with her. <laughs> How long have you been friends with him? Uh, like three months since I moved out of California. And what got you two together? Uh, we ran to each other in the hallway. And you were really attracted to him? Well, I just thought he was really cute, and then we just uh, as opposed to being really attractive. Okay. Right, just thought he was that. really cute. Okay, and thought, ooh, and then when he wouldn't respond, well, I'll be his friend anyway. <laughs> well, no. yeah. What did he do? What happened? Um, like when we met, we just started hanging out as friends. Like I didn't tell; he doesn't know that I like him. Yeah, that's, that's the point. Did he have a girlfriend at the time? Yeah. He yeah. did. He's, he's, a, he's, he's had a girlfriend the whole time I've known him. He's always had one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You never know. Sometimes it could be a bullpen thing. What, is, what does she think about hanging out, uh, you know, the girlfriend, think about him hanging out with you? She, um, she doesn't really think much of it. She thinks it's pretty cool. Ooh. We wouldn't consider that a good sign, would but, we? But, like, she doesn't. We talk. She, we're like Most that. women have kind of a spidey sense when there's a potential competitor around. Yeah. It tingles. Yeah. Nicole? Yeah? Uh, this friend... Uh, the girlfriend is your age too. Yeah. Goes to the same school. No. She no. Goes to a different school. Interesting. Mm. Out of the picture. How often do those two see each other? Uh, like twice a week. Does she live in town? Yeah. Hmm. And she's got no problem with you. No. Uh, that could be good and it could be bad. I mean, uh, she should perceive you as a little bit of a threat. Right. Maybe he's convinced her otherwise, or maybe Nicole's not threatening looking or doesn't have that vibe to her. Yeah, and he, she doesn't see him responding to her. How about you float this one? We haven't done this one in a while. Okay. What if you say to him, look, I, I'm glad to be your friend, and I'd like to continue being your friend, but you know, you I also have an interest in you, yeah. Yeah. and I understand you're in a relationship, yeah. but I'm just giving you some notice, yeah. and if you know, I don't want to break you two up, but if things go south, maybe we'll go out see a movie well yeah my friend was talking to him and he said that he let he thinks i'm hot but you know i don't know 
Like, well, I don't want to break them up. No, you like, just, put, yeah, you just go ahead you and put them on notice. Put them on notice. That's all. Put them on. <laughs> that's it. We, all right. And if he's interested, right. he'll respond. If he's not, he ain't. Okay. Okay, yeah. but listen, don't get into that thing where he gives you uh, some finger banging in uh, the back of a parked car and then goes back to her. Yeah. All right. You've got to finish that one up first. You don't Adam, put out. Yeah. I love you. I'm loving you, baby. All right. Is the Adam Kroll on your shoes? Yeah. Oh. Oh, nice. No, I, I got a picture off the internet and I like put it on my wall. Sweet. Oh, my God. It doesn't scare your friends? <laughs> no. 14, man. Just a couple years older. <laughs> I'd be all over that. <laughs> there, a little sum 41 for you, Nicole. Thanks. Yeah. I love yeah, she loves him. Is this that riff you like? Is it? Yeah, this yeah. is the riff. Right. Right. What do you think? I imagine they have other riffs. I'm just yeah. asking if this is one you like. One riff wonder. Yeah, I see this video on MTV. It's a good video. You don't see it, Anderson? You don't like it? Uh, Anderson's a snob over there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make sure and tell the band you put that puss on when I said that. Charlotte. Hi. What's up? Um... The other day, I left my swimsuit at my boyfriend's house. Your swimsuit? Cause, yeah, because he has a hot tub. And I was sick of just bringing it over, and I have a couple of them. So I left one there. Mm -hmm. And I went to his house yesterday to, like, surprise visit him. And I walked in his room, and he was wearing it, and he was masturbating. Oh, boy. Sweet. Oh. He had it out, like, through the leg. His It was erect, and he was, like, masturbating. And it was so weird. That's uh -huh. love. And I don't know what to say to him. And then today, when I went over there... He didn't have a shirt on, and I could see the elastic mark that he had been wearing it again. Did he know that you... <laughs> <laughs> you saw tan lines on him? No. Did, did he know that you saw him? I saw him the first time. The first time, does he know that you saw him? Yeah. He. How did he uh, react? Huh? How? He just it was kind of like, oh my God. <laughs> he and, didn't really say anything. And then what, you went out to the movies afterwards? Or what, how, how'd that go down? Um, I left the room for him to put his clothes back on, and we just like hung out for the rest of the day. All Didn't right. you have weird feelings the rest of the day? Yeah, it's I like when I went and saw him today. It was kind of awkward. I mean, I mm. want to say something like ask him not to do that and stretch it out, but <laughs> but it's like really weird to be around him. Like it's weird, like when he tries to like kiss me and be close. Yeah, it's kind of awkward because I keep you know thinking, oh my god, he wore my bathing suit. Probably got one of your tampons up him too. <laughs> Hang on a second. I don't know what's wrong with these uh, morons with the uh, getting popped, masturbating. Under any circumstances. Here's the deal. I whack off, I lock the door. I whack off in a girlfriend's bikini, I put a player piano in front of the door. And paint the windows. Paint the windows. Yeah. Uh, put up some plywood. Yeah. Basically, I treat that room as if a uh, hurricane was blowing into town. Right, right. There's got to be some voyeuristic need in all that. Then you think you can say, those guys get caught Some all danger. The Danger, they want to be seen. See if, seen we, can, as see if we can get one yeah. with the door open. Yeah. But do they really want to be caught? I mean, not... I think, I think they want to be seen. Well, that's per, being caught. You know what I mean? They, I don't yeah. think they go that, do the logic quite that far. It's an impulse, you know what I mean? Right, but do you, do you think it's a subconscious yes. thing? Yes, yeah, I do. It's yeah. an attitude. Because anybody who really didn't want to get caught would be barricading the house. So, was the door just open, or did you walk in and open the door? locks but it's one of the old locks where you just push the button in and you like turn it twice to the left and once to the right and it'll pop you know it was right. kind of one of those and he was like hold on hold on and i was like what do i have to wait for and i walked in and there he was and well, it was really strange ball buster yeah I mean, he didn't notice how he didn't stop and dive into a under well he was he was probably scrambling a little wasn't he yeah <laughs> it wasn't mid-stroke oh that's gonna leave scars yeah. And her and Charlotte. You're not wearing a you don't wear a thong back, do you? No, I didn't no. leave that one there. Good. Sweet, sweet. Oh man. And and then you just sort of carried on. He didn't try to explain it? He didn't explain it. I would just told him I was like, guys do weird things sometimes. It's like it's all right. <laughs> just, yeah. You know, yeah. I was only mad because he stretched it out, but it's still kinda awkward and I keep thinking about it. How's he otherwise? Other than he's really nice. Yeah. Do you have sex with him? Yeah. Yeah. How's that go? It's great. Hmm. He puts on your uh, cheerleading outfit and then he goes at it? No, but I was teasing him today. I was doing laundry and I grabbed my other swimsuit. And I was like, come on, I'll play lifeguard. Oh, well, he so, must love that. So, <laughs> so you... kind of looked like he was in pain. But... And then, and then the, was it the next day or later on in the week you saw him with the elastic... Uh, that was today I saw him with that. I caught him yesterday. Oh my and God. I saw the marks today. 
And okay. I asked him about it, and he was like, oh, no, I was just sitting on some wicker chair. Oh. Yeah, yeah, good comeback. No, it's like, wait, I know how the elastic looks and the stitch lines and everything. Okay. My swimsuit. <laughs> and what, he wouldn't let go. He wouldn't let... All right, but you don't sound thoroughly freaked out by it. Oh, it, but it's still weird, though. Yeah, I it's, mean, a it's, like... it's a little weird. It's a little weird. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you, when I was uh, seven, well, let me make sure of this. How old is this guy? He's 17. Yeah. When you, I was 17. No, don't tell me. I could have involved the bathing suit in some way, but it wouldn't. I wouldn't have put the top on. Mm. That's for goddamn sure. Mm. I may have looked Did at the, the bottoms on? a little. He had the top no, on, no. too. Yeah. Charlotte? Yeah. He had the top on, too? Yep, both oh. pieces. Uh. You don't have a one piecer you could leave over there, give him his dignity. I asked him if he wanted the one piece. He said no. They're just incredible, incredible things that people do. And this is this, to me. I flash to the the guys pretending they're ponies that the S and M people act out with. Yeah. This, to me, is that this is that? What is that? What where is that? What is the, there's somewhere in there? There's some immense pain. Do you um, think so? Yeah. I mean, are we making too much out of it? As you and I both know, these things don't exist. As a separate solo process, you know what I'm saying? They're not yeah. just about the bathing suit. It's it's an integrated phenomenon. The rest uh, of their person. Yeah, they but may be great people. Top makes me nervous, they, but they may be fine. At uh, then, seventeen, I could have got a wild hey, hair. And there's nothing wrong with them per se. But well, it still, it, it still suggests that, yes. that there's something very painful that they're sort of responding to. Yeah, I'm gonna give this one a a five on Four the uh, five, crampo yeah. meter. Yeah, though. it doesn't mean he's a bad partner. Weird. Doesn't mean he's a bad guy. It has nothing to do with the sexual orientation. I could, I could, I could overlook this one. Mm. You know why? Because I you did love, it. I love a bathing suit. You love a man in a bikini. <laughs> I love a man in a smart two-piece. Yeah. Uh, no, I like a woman in a bikini. Yeah. I, I know all guys do, but what I'm saying is, is there's some guys who'd like, you know, they're like a lingerie. Oh no. Or they like a kind of stripper outfit. No, no, no. Like no. some a little trashier, a little naughtier. I think if you grew up in Southern California, bikini. Mm. I mean. Could yeah. you remember hitting the beach at 15, 16, cool, cool. and just watching them go by? Cool. You, you know, what? and especially when the oil comes out. You know, and it starts glistening, brown skin. You want to know what the best look is, too? It's the bikini with the tennis shoes. <laughs> Not the bikini and those big novelty stripper wedgies, the big chunks of loose ice. the vans. I'm talking... No, better than Vans. You know, it used to be hot, and this is, I'm, I'm dating myself, but remember those Reebok high tops that all those chicks used to wear? They had the yeah. two things of Velcro strap yeah, on the yeah. top. They're yeah. kind of soft leather yeah, yeah. tennis yeah. shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing better. With leg warmers. Oh, please. <laughs> Don't screw with this. Don't turn this into a mockery. Let me tell you what the best look is, Drew. All right, tell me. You're at the beach. Hot day. Chicks laying out, sunning, oiling, whole bit. Then they get up, and they're making a snack bar run. They slide those uh, little high tops on. Don't tie them. Just kind of tuck the laces in yeah. and start making their way up to the to the pavement to get in line. That is a good look. That you know, is a great look. You know, the look. thing is, that's because that's what was emblazoned in your soul yeah. as you stood there on the boardwalk just staring out at the sand and watching them come towards you. Yeah. Oh, no, I was beating off oh. from in the men's from, room. Yeah, yeah, but they're looking still looking the out towards, yeah, towards the water. Yeah, that is so good, that bathing suit oh thing. Oh, my God. These things get stuck in our soul, in our head. <laughs> Bad. It's in my craw. It's only one way to get it out. Blast it out with semen. All right. We'll take a little break. We'll come back. Uh, hello? Who is this? Uh, this is Loveline. 1-800-LOVE-191. Loveline. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, Loveline, I'm Adam, there's Dr. Drew over there, phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191, little something from the cult in here uh, earlier this week, no, last week, wow, this week's flying, Drew, hmm. Some 41 is uh, going to be in here tomorrow night, there they is, love that riff, let me just enjoy, oh, let me enjoy that a little bit. Just thinking about those bikinis while I was urinating during the break. Really? Could you? You're okay? 
putting together a theme for tonight okay. when I get home. <laughs> a bikini theme? Yeah, going oh, bikini. Oh, nice. Michael? Yeah. You're 31? What's that? You're What's up, 31. Michael? What's up? Um, yeah, I was just wondering if there, were, if my relationship, if there was any real love in there, because for no. No. for our relationship, for six months, everything seemed to be pretty much good all the time, and she'd tell me that she loved me, and that she thought I was intelligent, and a great guy, and perfect for her, and then all of a sudden, you know, we break up, and I'm just trying to figure out if there was any real love there, or no. if it was just It was a charade built on a foundation of marzipan. Michael, what do you figure, that if you love someone, you can't break up with them? No, I don't figure that at all. I'm just, uh, I guess I'm just trying to um, deal with this myself and figure out, you know, if, if any of it was real, if it was just because I, re I loved her more than anyone else has, and she's only been in a, one other serious relationship where someone, she loved someone and they didn't reciprocate the love. How old was, is she? She's 21. Ooh. What are you dealing with somebody so young for? Yeah, that's tough. Why so young? Um, I, it wasn't my intention to meet someone so young. It's just we had met, and then we went out, and everything seemed to be really good. We enjoyed doing a lot of stuff together. Why, right. what, do you, what do you understand? You felt close to her when you were dating her. She said she loved you. You enjoyed her company. What, yeah. what are you trying to do now? What's the big deal? Well, he's freaked out. Well, he's hard no, uh, no, no, no. She left, right? She, she fell out of love, or she changed her feelings, or something happened, and now she left. So, what's so there to, what is there to figure out? So the simple thing is, is since she decided that I'm not the right one, it doesn't matter why or anything else. It just matters that it's over now. Yeah, it didn't well, matter if there was any love before. Well, no. No. How do you, what, how do, what do you think breaks relationships up, Michael? Um, I well, think... Well, hold on, Michael. It's not like you're going to sue her if, if we find some evidence of love in the past. Yeah, people have varying capacity for love. To her, to her sense of that experience, she was in love for a while. And then not. Why did, uh, Drew, please, leave the guy alone. He's heartbroken. Why did uh, she say she wanted to break up? Um, one of the reasons is because at, at first it did, she thought that I was very intelligent, but then she, then she decided that education is important to her, and since I'm not educated and she is educated, then she doesn't feel like we, ha we can, she can talk to me like she can talk to her girlfriend who has taken the same classes that she has. Nah. That ain't it. What else? Also because she says that um, she thinks that I'm insecure. Well, which, there, well you're telling there, us that already. She yeah. may have a point. Hold on. Excuse me? Michael, I got a good fart coming on now. Hold on. <laughs> that's funny, right, Michael? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. funny. I you mean, I'm being a little more serious than that. I understand. Well, no, I understand, but if you're more secure, you'd be laughing. I love you. Okay. I, I feel I feel for you, Michael, and and Drew does too. He's just giving you a little tough love. No, no, no. Yeah. No, I just I just I just want I just want some good advice. I just want you guys to you know set me straight on this. We will. Whatever. We're but gonna I, do that. I have a better understanding. Quiet okay. down. We're, we're gonna we're gonna set you straight. How long ago did you guys break up? We broke up like three weeks ago. And have you spoken to her since? Um. Yes. She. We had talked. Um. Like a week ago. Week and a half ago. And that was you initiating it, right? No, that was her calling me what to, did, see, to see how everything was going and, and see how I was doing and this and that. And what would you tell her? Is that her returning your call? No. She had called me the Saturday before. I returned her call, and I was not home. Did you totally and freak out on her when she broke up? No, I did not. Okay. She understands you would like to get back together. Yes? Yeah, yeah, she knows that I care about her a lot. You know, and I and I feel like she cares about me too. But I almost feel like she's it's it's the fact that she's so young also. And yeah, that's yeah. part of it. That is want. part of it. Right. So, Michael, here's the here's the ultimate truth in this, and it's it's a horrible, horrible. Bless you, Drew. Thank it's you. a horrible bottom line. She's not with Michael. Whatever reasons it is, whatever whether she loved you, whether she never loved you, whether she has a brain tumor. Whether it has to do with your prior education, whatever it is, she's out. She's done. Yeah. And yeah. when you're out, you're out, and that's it. And you can strategize and come up with all the angles you want. You can go back and sift through everything you've ever said to her and everything you've ever done, but it doesn't change the fact that it's out. Now, you, need to, you seem to need to soil this relationship in some way in order to get over it, and I think that's a huge mistake. It had value. It was great while you were in it. 
There were real feelings there, and right. they changed. And that's the way feelings are. And you'll find somebody else. And the, the worst thing you can do is to, you know, get drunk and make a scene. Yeah, no, I quit drinking. I mean, okay. I, haven't, I haven't been Good. drinking. Ever. There you go. He wants to keep going. I hate this, too. Is that Minka I see on the computer over there? Oh, Adam. <laughs> you have a bikini on? Mm, hold on a second. Would you move your head, goofball? I can't see Minka. Who is number one? Minka's number one. That's who's number one. How do you tell that that's Minka from here? I got good eyes when it comes to big boobs. Oh my God. I'm looking at a computer screen that's turned at a bad angle from uh, eh, 25 feet away. I just looked up. I saw Minka. Yeah, you see, you saw like a, a three-inch figurine of her at 400 yards. That's right. Oh I got an God. eagle eye when it comes to Minka. Oh, my God. She's the number one Asian big boob queen. You're like, like a hawk looking for a field mouse. Number one <laughs> Asian five. big boob. Well, three, 300 feet over the surface of the earth, he found it. The thing I'm most curious about with Minka is she used to play professional uh, tennis, but I'm not sure if, he, if she does anymore. Don't play tennis no more. No, I see. What, what was her coach told her? <laughs> Don't play tennis no more. No, no, he said, Minka, you, be po- <laughs> you should be important. He doesn't have that on a drop, I does he? I did. All right. Yeah, somewhere. More great radio from Dr. Okay. Drew, everybody. Okay. Anytime. Yeah, so whenever yeah. you have a gut feeling, ignore it. Be ignore it. And take another call. <laughs> Okay. What is Minka doing on that computer screen, Anderson? Our uh, new screeners hadn't seen her, and I was just showing them. It's Smooth. actually working tonight, so I put it on. Nice. John? Yes. You're 23? Yes. I've just shifted themes, by the way. <laughs> I'm going Minka when I get home, not bikini. I see that. Okay. What's up, John? Okay. Um, just a question I had, uh, something that happens to me. My wife goes down, gives me a BJ. I ejaculate. Hold on, immediate... hold on. Ejaculate. <laughs> yes, keep going. I am immediately able to continue and have intercourse or whatever at that point. You don't lose your erection. Exactly. All right, that's fine. You're 23. This but, will end. This will end soon. Enjoy it. Enjoy well, it for a couple of years. But any other method of that I ejaculate, whether it be intercourse or any other way, I it, that's not the case. Is is uh, oral sex more arousing to you in some way? Actually, it seems like it's less. That's right. Ooh. So you're less depleted in some way. We All couldn't right. hang, John. What's that? We couldn't hang, me and you. <laughs> we just could not hang out. Sorry. I'd be like an Arab and a Jew. Just We have <laughs> fundamental differences. I'm sure you're a nice guy, but we just could not hang out. So you then have intercourse, and you have another uh, ejaculation with the same erection. Correct. Yeah, that's good. All right. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's... Uh, well, you're not working as hard either. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're not sort of physically spent. You, 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 some guys, in order to have uh, an ejaculation through intercourse, they're going at it for 15 or 20 minutes. They're burning a few calories. They're tired. Uh-huh. All right. Good time, Joe John. Okay. Enjoy that penis of yours. Also, I'm trying to think, but there may be something to being on your back as opposed to sort of leaning forward on your knees. Whatever. Yeah. Not, it's not a good uh, boner position. I'm not sure there's something worth spending a lot of time thinking about. Well, I'm just talking about me. I know. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you, you go thinking your own time. That's good. But do you know what I'm saying? You're on your back. Uh, and somebody... but not everyone is as lazy as you are. Oh, really? No. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, if I wasn't so lazy, I'd look into that. <laughs> Ryan? Hey. Hey, you're 19. Hey, I was just calling to Adam. First of all, you're awesome. Yeah. You're a very, very funny guy. Thanks. That feels I saw, good. I saw your, uh, your partner, Jimmy, on uh, Letterman tonight. Oh, How yeah. was that? Also a very funny guy. Was yeah. Good? Um, I was kind of calling to talk to Dr. Well, Drew. Hold on. How was Jimmy on Letterman tonight? He was pretty good. I saw him his first time, and, uh, and it almost seemed like Letterman was scared of him. But, uh, first time I, or this time? Uh, the, the very first time I saw him. He was he scared? Was, uh, he was taking off his clothes. Right. Yeah. Uh, this time he seemed pretty good. Letterman, and, you know, he enjoyed him. It was, it was a good time. Yeah, I, I heard it was good. I talked to Jimmy uh, earlier today, but I, I haven't been home yet, so I haven't seen it. And I'm, actually, I'm not going to see it until tomorrow. But uh, I should, uh, I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, partner, life partner, and a business partner, Jimmy Kimmel from The Man Show, and uh, also uh, the Fox Morning Show pregame football show will be on Letterman tonight. Thank you. Anyway, what's your question, Ryan? Okay, I was uh, kind of calling to talk to Dr. Drew about what his uh, opinion was on the correlation between attention deficit disorder and addiction. Uh, the same. That pretty much everyone with addiction has ADD of some type. You think so? Absolutely. They're, they're, once we figure out what the genetic... 
precursors are to these diseases. You'll see they'll be the same. Yeah, and yeah. we'll start killing you guys at birth. No. Well, there, there, was, there was a while where people were huh? thinking that way. It's bizarre, yeah. But yeah, why not? But, uh, yeah, ADD, all addicts have ADD, all of them, and uh, you cannot treat them. You, I mean, you don't. The, a, the treatment for the ADD in addiction is treating the addiction. Period. You do not take medication. What do you them. got? You got them both, right? Well, no, I was, at, I was diagnosed with ADD when I was, like, I don't know, like 10 or 11 or something. And uh, over the last, like, two or three years, I've been getting into the, the, the drug scene. Yeah. Nope. There you go. So it, it's, uh, just don't take stimulants for the ADD. Don't do it, ever. Like Ritalin and things like that? Yeah. Before the age of 18, it turns out that's actually helpful. It's bizarre. The addicts, it looks like, before the age of 18, if they take Ritalin, it doesn't do anything to their addictive disease and may significantly improve their symptoms of ADD and actually improve their personality development, their coping strategies, their performance academically. So there is precedent to treating them before the age of 18. But at 18, because of the way the brain changes, we don't really know what that change is, you've got to get off that stuff. Well, you said 18. Did you say 16 earlier, or has it always been 18? 18. All right, so that's the age. 18. Stimulus till 18, that's it. And then what? Then get the addiction treated, or wait for your addiction to really play out, and then get it treated. Oh, what if you don't there, have anything? What are, if you just got ADD and you're not? Oh, hooked then on then you anything? then you stand. Then stimulants are fine. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Uh, after eighteen? Yep. Well, that's different. Yep, it is different. And right. if you have to be on treatment, yeah, clonidine, Wellbutrin, these things are the way to go. Good times. Dr. Uh, Drew is uh, here handing out the uh, solid advice, and uh, because of that, we're going to hear uh, the Dr. Drew boogie huh? when we get back. Love line, love line. 1-800-LOVE-191. Um, back in a minute. Yeah, everybody on the floor, this is Ice-T. You're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Nobody moves, nobody gets hurt. He ain't lying. Phone number, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Why don't we hear uh, a little of that Dr. Drew uh, boogie? You know, we we promised to play it for a caller earlier in the week, as usual. We, <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't deliver, and... Uh, now it's time, and, and this is uh, dedicated to uh, what's her nose who called up and wanted to hear it two days ago. How? <laughs> get down, get down, asshole. Get down, get down. You're gay. Get down, get down. You're fat. Get down, get down. You're sick. If I find you, have sex with me. Gee, it hurts. Have sex with me. Faggot better have sex with me. I want to have sex with me. I was born, so I had anal sex. Gee, it hurts. I'm still a virgin. Tried to be straight, or I thought I should be straight, and I was confused. I me. You know, pee on this makes me sick. It hurts when I urinate. It makes me sick. Anal sex makes me sick. This guy's penis makes me sick. I've had anal sex, but felt no effect. I've got these lesions. Gee, it hurts. I'm still a virgin. It makes me sick. It's called intimacy. Can I say that? Ow. You're fat. Ow. You're gay. Ow. Confused. Ow. You're sick. You're overweight. You're still a virgin. You're dysfunctional. Not acceptable. You're lesbian. Is that a uh, oh, nice little ad on there? Dr. Joyce Brothers. Is that Joyce Brothers? Dr. Yeah. Joyce, right? I don't, I don't uh, say that enough. You're sick. No, Not I'd like anymore. to hear more yeah, of that out of you. I really let that go. Speaking of sick, our uh, security guard, I think, has uh, narcolepsy. <laughs> he has sleep apnea, is what he's got. Is that what he has? Let's listen. Well, maybe the listeners ought to listen. Well, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Now, as you know, Anderson's shaking his head because he doesn't want to stand up a uh, third time now. <laughs> but um, a year, maybe two years ago, we had the same guard. And he <coughs> dozed off. He dozes off in the entryway on the sofa. And he's so loud that it's very comical to hear him snore. And I thought the audience would get a kick out of that. So we took a 20-foot mic extension and I snuck the mic around. And it's scary because he's a big guy. But I slid the mic uh, right up as close to him as I could get. And then we just kind of checked into it. <laughs> as the night wore, wore on. Now, I think he might, may have gotten fired or suspended last time we did this. But it was still funny and now, look, well worth it. Here's the thing about him, though. Whenever we go outside, he, he lurks with us. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's on top. Yeah, of he's that. a demon. He's a demon. Anyone out there who's thinking about giving us a hard time, he's an animal. But uh, he's sawing some pretty good logs now. I'd like to check in on that. Anderson? I'm shaking my head because he says he works like 12-hour days. Then he comes over here. I just feel bad for the dude. I know, but it's still funny. But it's not funny when he doesn't show up for like three months after that. Uh-huh. He got busted. Well, I mean, it's too late now. We've been talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. But get that 20-foot mic cord, and let's just see where this goes. Can we do that? We'll take a call. I'll grab that cord. Let me just try sneaking out there. All right? Okay. We'll, we'll take some calls in the meantime. We'll keep you posted. Raj? Yeah. You're 40? Yeah. What's up? Going on there. How you doing, dude? Good. Are you high? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. tired, man. Ne- just getting are- out of work. And high. Uh, tired and high? A little bit. Yeah. All right. It, it It's not on? noticeable, if you're curious. Oh, really? We had, we had nervous there. We had no idea. All right. So what's the question? What's the question? Is it kind of sick if uh, I like to masturbate outdoors? Sure. Let mosquitoes bite my dick while I do it. I see. That's perfectly fine. There's That's no, normal? That is totally normal. Enjoy. And, and when Keep you, doing that. And when you get uh, West Nile fever or encephalitis, just let us know. Well, you could get that if a mosquito landed on your arm, couldn't you? Yeah, but usually you're trying not to have mosquitoes uh, land and bite. Sounds like he's sort of suggesting he does that. Well, who, intentionally. Who are we to uh, take away the guy's muse? Yeah, he's right. got a dream. Let him live it. John. Yeah. You're 38. Yeah, I am. What's up? <clears throat> um, I had uh, back surgery, three levels of uh, back surgery, about five, six years ago. And uh, after that, they had me prescribed uh, taking Dilaudid. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, <clears throat> my body decided that uh, yeah, came to like the Dilaudid quite a bit and um, have come to become addicted to the Dilaudid. Yeah. And, it it uh, seems like a pretty ad- addictive drug, isn't it, Drew? Profoundly. Yeah, real profoundly. Like I, nothing like I found even with taking like oxycontin or anything like that. All the other stuff he's tried, right? Yeah, um, not even like other, you know, what they would call. All right. So what's the question? Well, the question is, um, I want to get clean, and I've tried just going cold turkey, and have not had very good success. I've heard. Where, how many times have you been in treatment? Yes, I have. Right, what happens? Um, well, I've been. <laughs> I've been on 80 to 100 milligrams a day of the Dilaudid. What happens in treatment? Um, I couldn't. I couldn't make it through the cold turkey, the mm-hmm. diarrhea, the vomiting. I just. I got out. How were you, How were you being treated at the time? Just cold turkey. Then they weren't treating you with any other medication. No, they just tried. Oh, you need. You need clonidine. to go. Non, oh yeah, well, that's other medicine. Clonidine. What else? That's it. Well, there's a number of other medications they can use. At least six or seven that can help with the withdrawal. Yeah, I wanted it, to ask you about the bute. Something about bupronex. Yeah, bupronex is fine, but um, people get strung out on bupronex too. Really? Now, and you got to understand, getting off the dilated is the easiest thing. As miserable as it is, it's actually easier than the process of staying off it. And that's where the real work needs to be done. If you want to come off on bupronex, fine. Make sure it's someone who really knows what they're doing with it, but and make sure you're in a program and that you stay there for at least a couple months afterwards, at least. Chronic pain and opiate addiction is one of the more difficult and more common combinations out there, and it takes many months to treat. Is this Anna? Uh huh. Wow, interesting uh, spelling there. You're 19. What's up? Okay, like a couple weeks ago, I was over um, visiting my aunt and uncle, mm-hmm. and like I'm moving out of my house in a couple weeks, and I was talking about how hard it was going to be for me to pay rent, and this was just me and my uncle. My aunt actually wasn't home. And he started talking about how it would be really easy for him to get me, like, a sugar daddy. And I'm not sure if he was talking about himself or, like, one of the guys from work. And I was like, no, no, you know, I don't, you know, I don't think I could get one. And he was like, no, really, I know that you could get one. And I was just, like, wondering, like, what I should do or what that means. And what is why? with your uncle? Yeah. What a, Jesus what a God. lovely, lovely individual. Why were you over there in the first place? Um, actually, I was looking for, um, I was using the computer because I'm selling my car. He's not the one who's related to you by blood, is he? No, he's... Um, he's married to your mother's he's sister. He's married to my mom's sister, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What a dick. <laughs> Here, he's sick. Here we go. I'm feeling good. Go, sick, That's Drew. sick. 
<laughs> He's an idiot. He's an asshole. And uh, we, we, we wonder about your aunt, too, for uh, marrying this well, piece of work. Actually, he was like our next door neighbor. Like, my grandma and grandpa lived in this Did house. Did he ever do anything to you when you were growing up? Um. Oh, my God. This guy's got to be shot. And the, okay, well, like one time we were like having a barbecue and like he stuck his hand like down the back of my pants, yeah. but like he didn't really like do anything like. How overt. old were How old were you? I was about nine. Oh, he's a, he's a despicable he, asshole! Despicable asshole! <laughs> yeah, it, it, I I really wish, and and this is how I know there's not a god. I'd I'd like something rusty to go through this guy's liver. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this guy's a he's a piece of work. But he's like the only father figure like I've ever. Oh, had. okay. Wait, wait, wait. We have to talk like, to someone. Totally Hold on. Hang on. Relax. Stop. Hang on. Stop. Hang on. Where's Please. my? I, I'm just glad I found my righteous indignation again. Yeah, it's it was good. it was missing for a yeah, while, but yeah. it's back. All right, we're gonna return with uh, Drew, his righteous indignation, and uh, possibly the uh, snore mic after this. Hello, this is your radio. Everybody, love line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew over there. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Some forty one in here tomorrow night. Uh, we got the uh, we got the mic with the twenty five foot cord on it. And uh, engineer Anderson is a conscientious objector to this. Uh, Drew says he is too, but uh, I think it's good radio. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna sneak that mic out there and put it out under our security guard's mouth because he he makes such a novelty snoring sound i just i gotta do it all right you know right now next ball geez i don't know you know it's a little scary sneaking out there on a big guy with a gun putting a mic by him plus i think he got canned for it last time so you know he could really just pull his piece and uh you know freak out yeah that'd be great too what what happened to adam uh security guard shot him what the hell? What'd they do? Get in a fight? Were they drunk? Uh, no, I woke him up. Let's finish uh, with uh, Anna, and then I'm going to go out there and test the waters, okay? Uh-huh. All right. Uh-huh. <laughs> How old am I? Twelve. Thanks. Anna. Anna? So, yeah. you've got this asshole mar- uh, uncle by marriage. Yeah. Okay. Well, see, because, like, my aunt was, like, his babysitter, because he was married before. This is his second marriage. Your aunt was his what? He, she was his babysitter. Like, he used to babysit. She used to babysit for his children. Oh. He's 12 years older than her. Oh, my and God. And so then he started, like, messing around with her. And oh, he broke my God. Up his marriage. Oh, he, what an idiot. He actually slept with one of my other aunts before he slept with her. Oh, now he's going for you. Well, yeah, I used to live with him. Like, I just moved out, like... Did you ever have sex with this guy? No. Oh, my God. Is He's just a colossal asshole. No. He He has kids? Yeah, he has three kids. Uh, yeah. Like one is like, well, two of them are grown, and then he has a son that's six. Yeah. What's um, What's this guy do for a living? An auto body, something um, with no, cars? No, actually, he works for a bread company. He's like the district manager. For um, what company? He works for a bread company. Oh, yeah. a real bread winner. Yeah. All right. Um, well, I hope he dies in some sort of oven explosion. Well, yeah, it like really like shook me because this is like somebody that okay. I look to as like my father. No, you don't. You, well, you can't. If you do. You've got a real problem with man, real I problem. Do, I do have a real problem. with Yeah, him. this is not a this is not a normal male. This is not somebody you should look to for really? role modeling. No. And like I remember, like when I was like twelve, he was like having the little birds and bees talk with me, uh. and he was like saying how like he used to have sex with girls when he was like twelve, and how like I should have sex, but I should like have like protect his. And I was like twelve years old. Okay. Well, listen, we believe you. This no, guy's well, an a hole. Yeah. Do you, have, okay. do you have boyfriends? Do you have a relationship with men? Um, I have a really hard time. Like, um, I'm a dancer, and so I have a... Camp, re- jazz, uh, modern, uh, interpretive, ballet, which... Naked. Ah! <laughs> topless um, and bottomless? Just topless. Just topless. Does, um, he, does he know you do this? 
Um, yeah, he does. Yeah. Does he ever swing by the club? Um, no, but his friends come in. Uh. And, oh, yeah, another thing. Like, I don't have my name on your shoes, Adam, but, like, this guy who works at the club, he likes girls that have tattoos. So sometimes my friend will, like, write Ace Rockola, like, on my breast, like, on the top. It looks Sweet. really cute. Yeah. yeah. Ace on one, Rockola on the other? No, all on one. All on one. Ooh, yeah. that's a good size brass. Yeah, I have, yeah, they're pretty big. You have what, huh? They're pretty big. Nice. So. Yeah. So what, because, yeah. like, I oh. mean, it would really help out, like, if I had a guy to, like, pay the rent and stuff, because yeah. I'm, like, struggling. I'm, like, going yeah. through. Yeah, yeah. And listen, everyone would like some guy to pay the rent, yeah. maybe lease him a car and buy him a tennis bracelet. That's not the answer, though. Really? Yeah. I don't, oh, boy. I don't know where to start. I know. I have lots of problems. Yeah. Okay. okay. But you know that. We know that. Now our listeners know that. But here's what you need to do. You realize you have problems. You can't act out. Can you, can you just get a regular job? Um, well, I wait tables, like, during the day. But All right. And, and by, by the way, between stripping and waiting tables, you should have a 1400 bucks cash every week but in your right, hand. But I still have to pay rent, and rent is, like, so expensive here, like, for, like, a decent, like, one bedroom. Like are, you, are, you Hold on. are you in Manhattan? Where are you? No, I live, like, in California. Okay. I moved out when I was your age. I was 19. Yeah. I worked as a construction laborer. I made $7 an hour, had taxes taken out, yeah. and walked at the end of every week with about 235 240 bucks. Made it just fine. Sure, I wanted to kill myself. <laughs> I got okay. two roommates. I got a one-bedroom apartment, and I just figured out how to make it work, and it'll work. So go get yourself a roommate and move the hell out of there. And stop worrying about the car you're driving and uh, have you, all that thing. stuff. My car is like five hundred dollars a month. Oh my God! What are you driving? I have a Sebring. H it's how? Like brand new. Did you call us once before? E did I call you before? Yeah. yeah like about the forty-year-old guy. Mm. Tell us again. What was this? Um, I was driving like home from work, and this guy was forty, and he's like in a BMW, and he pulled her over. Remember this? Right. Yeah. And yeah. he said I was going to end up in an early grave. How's that guy doing? Um, well, actually, I talked to him, like, the day after, and I told him that um, we shouldn't have a relationship and, like, we shouldn't talk to each other, and he's too old for me. Good. And he was, like, disappointed, but... Yeah. All right. Step in the right direction. Yeah, Anna, yeah. You're, you're, you seem pretty workable. Why don't you get some, some help? Yeah, she's hot. I'd do her. Yeah, but, I mean, maybe some... I don't know, huh? Oh, I see. Yeah, I you see know, what you're saying. You know what I mean? Somebody who she really can trust to give her some decent direction. She takes direction. She's, she's not two guys on a radio. Right. She's, she's, she's waiting tables mm -hmm. and stripping. For Christ's sake, she's got a huge wad of cash at the end of every day. Mm -hmm. Get yourself a roommate. Get an apartment. Get away from this guy. Get a therapist. Get a little therapy and start working it. Yeah. Okay. Drew, I'm going to go out with this microphone. Yeah. Okay. Now, our security guard is sawing logs. Did you fart again? No. Right. Why? You it's, want me to fart? No, no. It's just starting to smell in here. That could be my breath. Yeah. The security guard we have is uh, sawing logs out on the sofa. Okay. I got a mic with a 25-foot cord. If he's sitting there just bolt awake when you come around the corner with that microphone, I'm going to run. Okay. I, it's it's going to be uncomfortable. I'm not sure if I should get down. Maybe I should get down on my belly. Well, you should walk, matter of fact, like you're just going out there. With the smoke. microphone? Take, take a smoke. With a microphone? Mm-hmm. All right, you cover for me, okay? I'll take a call. Now, okay. I'm not going to talk into the into the mic while I'm taking it out there, because I don't, don't want to wake him up. Mm -hmm. Let me take a call. Why don't you narrate? Just hold on a second. All right, I'll be back. I'm the conscientious objector, though. I don't want to participate in this. I know, but you're what you call an enabler now. <laughs> Is this thing on? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm. Okay, stepping out of the studio. Well, that's good radio. What he's doing is he's opened the door. He's <laughs> looking both ways around the corner. He is, uh, don't hear any snoring right now. Yeah, here he goes. He's moving out towards the front door. He's taking a hard left turn. He's sort of taking, moving in sort of one step at a time and sliding the other foot back to meet the foot that took the step. Mike's coming around. Oh, here he goes. Listen, you can hear him snoring. Moving into position. That was on the, he's on his stomach. He's on the ground. He's going to get caught, I'm sure of it. Hold on here. He's out. Now, come on. Come on. Okay. Oh, God. Must be Son a of a bitch. He's what? not snoring now. I know. Go sound. Oh, he got up. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Shut the door, Drew. Jesus Christ, you almost knocked your coffee over. <laughs> Oh, Drew, go get the extra cord that's hanging out the door now. It's, it's coming right back in here. No, not that cord. The, the stuff on the floor. Open the door and pull it it's in. Right, it's in. It's in. I'm telling you, there's 10 feet hanging out there. Yeah, it's going to fall that cord in here and kick our ass. It's all oh, you there. made it in? Yeah. Jesus Christ, how'd it get in here? All right. I, I think Anderson tipped him off. Did, did Anderson tip him off? He did, didn't he? Son of a... Bitch. Anderson, come on, did you tip him? See, like I told you, it's already too late. What do you mean it's already too late? If I want to save him, I mean, it's too late oh, to save him. Right. I'm not going to tip all him right. off. All it's right, all right. Lauren was nodding her head yes when I said, did you tip him off? She's worse than Ann that way. All right, that's true. little fire starter. All right, we'll keep the mic here and we'll try. Maybe we'll do it, try it tomorrow night. <laughs> they scared the hell out of me. <laughs> wasn't snoring, but... You know when the guys, they got that uh, sleep apnea? What's yeah. he got? <laughs> yeah, and it's like, yeah. you lie in there, it's total silence, total silence, you're making your move, and all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, you <laughs> crap myself. Okay, I'm, I'm telling him that's Anderson's idea if he questions me. John? Yes. You're 30? Yeah, I hope so. What's up? Um, got a question for the doc. Adam, you rule, man. Thanks. Uh, doc, I'm ADD, and I've got bipolar. Yeah. Okay, I'm taking uh, Concerta for the ADD, mm -hmm. I'm taking Remerons mm -hmm. for the bipolar, and they're trying me on some anger management stuff. They've got me on Clonopins and a brand spanking new one called Geodone or mm. Geodon. Geodon, yeah. Okay. Um, Doc, I got zero sex drive. Yeah, no kidding. Um, All those meds. Although, Remeron is usually one of the ones that often doesn't cause depressed sexual functioning. I'm suspecting it was the Concerta. Concerta can, and I don't know about Geodon. It really is a new medicine. The main thing they worry about with Geodon is it changes the conductivity in your heart and can prolong a certain phase of what's called depolarization called well, the QT interval. Well, if you've got anger management problems, maybe you shouldn't be getting laid. Well, you oh, know? Maybe I should get me, be getting laid more often. Well, that might mm -hmm. straighten it out, too. Uh, Touche. But, 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 Adam, it's like... Uh, it's like a chore. It's like changing the rear mainsail in your 350 Chevy. Oh, you know, yeah. It's just something you just, you're not looking forward to. I tell you, there's nothing worse than that rear mainsail going. Yeah. All that oil draining yeah. draining chore, onto the clutch. It? Yeah, see, when the okay. clutch starts slipping, uh, that's, that's how you that. know that rear mainsail's that's gone. That's right there. Yeah, that's that's a bitch. you gotta, um, you got to pull the tranny. Huh? What can I do? I've asked my doctor. They've, well, tried, they've tried me on Yohimbi. Yeah. Didn't do nothing. Anything Absolutely else? nothing. She said to try ginkgo. No. I've been taking ginkgo now out the Yazoo for two months. Nothing there. Ask her about Wellbutrin. That's one of the things that sometimes helps. Okay. A and I found one substance on this planet that works, but it's illegal. What's that? Coke. Oh, really? It gets really? you in the mood, huh? Oh, uh, like a rabbit. Oh, that's interesting. Just, uh, just the line gets going? Yeah, yeah all night long. Hmm. That's weird. How much is Coke nowadays? I, I, I was talking about getting know. back I, into that. I'm broke. I'm, I, I work, so oh, I, I got see. no money to be buying it. How are you right. paying for all those meds? That's like 300 bucks a week. But um, yeah, I, Veteran? Are you a veteran? No. Huh. And uh, the other thing, what about Viagra? Have you tried that? Um, I don't have problems with the operation. It's just the motivation. It's the desire. It's the motivation. It's yeah, the well, butrin, well, butrin is one of those things that's been recommended adding to uh, these medications as helping with drive. Are you married? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. How's the anger management going? What'd you do? Um, I just blow up real easy. All over right. Anything. All right. You have kids? Like, like, like the fact that it's taken me three hours to get through to y'all. All right. Well, that's, listen. That, that's, a, that's a great thing to key me off. Don't take it out on us. No, you guys are cool. All right, John. Listen, do you have kids? No, I am not procreating. Good, good man. I tell you, I'm a huge fan of John. Look, all you, I don't blame you for having troubles. You got problems with anger management. You're on uh, more drugs than Howard Hughes was on before he died and Elvis put together. Fine. People have problems. They have imbalances and chemical problems. Understood. I only get mad when you start having the goddamn kids. Yep. This John, he's fine by me. Knows he's got problems. He knows he's not going to make a world-class dad. He doesn't have any kids. Good. 
Drew, you're dripping coffee all over your white shirt there. Where? Well, I just saw it dripping off your cup. You, you knocked the cup over where when you spazzed out when I came back in here with the microphone. I don't know where it went, but I swear to Christ, it was just dripping off that thing right onto your chest. Okay. What? All right. I don't know. I don't know. Amanda? Yes. You're 21? Yes. What's going on? Well, let's see. I've been, uh, my, I'm engaged right now. Um, been dating the guy for five years. Um, but I'm having trouble uh, every time I see my best friend, who's a guy, uh, and I've known him since I was five, and there's just a lot of old feelings there. And I used to have a really big crush on him when I was younger, and I still feel like there's some feelings that I, I sort of, you know, I, I love him sort of in a way. Is this, now listen, you gotta you got to figure this out. Yeah. Is this a desire to have a last fling before you get married? I, I don't know what it is. I well, mean, I'm supposed to be is, getting mar- married is, next month. All right, hold on, because so many women have a fling before they get married. Apparently, that's a pretty common thing. Is it? Yeah. Or are you ambivalent about getting married and really shouldn't be? Yeah. I, I've been engaged for a year and a half. I I, th- I would think I would be sure, but it's just some kind well, of... Well, you're deal. 21. It's easy to be not sure at 21. Though. Yeah. Yeah. And my, my mom keeps asking me, well, are you sure you want to get married? I'm like, well, I think so. She, and, she uh, doesn't sound like she's a big fan of your husband-to-be. Oh no, she she likes him a lot, and uh, she just wants me to be absolutely sure, because my sister's engaged to a real dork. So, <laughs> how old how old is the uh, guy you're engaged to? He's twenty two. Mm-hmm. And so, what about this guy you've uh, been hot for since you were five? <laughs> Ever have anything with him? No, no, not really. I mean, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Just, uh, nothing. I mean, I when I was real little, I used to like grab him and kiss him when I was like eight but, but that's just little kids now why is the guy so close to you still I, I don't know I mean we we were friends all go, during growing up and then when we uh, I moved away when I was 13 but we just stayed in touch and I go down to see him every now and then he lives about five six hours away and how come nothing ever happened I don't know he's had girlfriends I've had boyfriends and it's just I don't know it, it to him I guess it doesn't seem like you know it would he's, he's not interested I guess not. I, yeah. I, he, he told me once that he was interested in me. During a long drought. I, what? During a long drought. <laughs> <laughs> During a long drought, yeah. yeah. No, I don't, I don't know. He said he was interested in me, right, I mean, a couple of times after I came back, after, you know, I moved yeah. away. Yeah. But I was dating this other guy, and, you know, same guy that I'm going to be marrying. And All right. And he's seeing someone now, too? Uh, no, he's not. Well, but again, him. whether or not she wants to jump ship and go with him is really not the issue. The issue is... Is she ambivalent about getting married? Should she not get married? Mm-hmm. Is this just a desire to have a final fling? What, what's going on here? I, I would think going to a marriage at 21 with any kind of ambivalence is not a way to go to a marriage. Yeah. I, I really don't I think it's a good idea. I hate okay. to agree with Drew, but I do. <laughs> so maybe I should put it off a little until I figure well, you this out. get some clarity. Yeah, what's the hurry? You're 21. Yeah. You know the data on marriages at 21? It's awful. <laughs> just waiting five years puts you up the food chain in terms of success. You have a 115% chance of divorce in the first three years. Do you okay. know that? No, I didn't know that. Yes, it's staggering. Wow. Okay, so did you set a date for the marriage yet? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's next month. <laughs> Oh, next month. We've been planning this for a long time, and I'm just now starting to feel a little... I don't know if it's just cold feet or if I'm... Well, it, it, for a woman, and uh, I I don't mean to lump all women into uh, one clump, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. If a woman has... I don't think women have cold feet. Okay. I think they have reservations. <laughs> I think they have worries. I don't really think it's cold feet. Mm-hmm. You... Th- when they think this guy's the one, that's it. They're they're ready to get married, whether it's at seventeen, twenty seven, or forty seven. Yeah. And when they think uh, I got cold feet, that's a that's a thing that a twenty two year old guy has. Yeah. Not the woman. Right. So you, I think you have some reservations, some serious reservations about marrying this guy. Yeah, there are, there are some things that I've worried about. <laughs> What's up with him? Oh, I don't know. There's just some things that we seem to differ a lot on like what i'm a lot more uh, outgoing and socially you know that sort of mm, thing he's kind yeah. of he's kind of an introvert <laughs> what else with him um i don't know i mean th- there's just a lot of stuff like where he's more strict with money than i am i of course i'm in debt but he's not well yeah, all right, that, but, that can all work though that can, yeah, yeah. Does yeah that he, can work out but i mean does he flip your cookie <laughs> seriously i well oh, are you there yeah. We're here. Okay, I have my cell phone. I thought it was going to die. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, no. I'm no, 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 no. No. You're 21. 
Yeah. It should be, yes, of course. Yeah. That's it. That's what it's all about at 21. Mm-hmm. If they even got that. Yeah. He ain't flipping the cookie. And I think she is trying to come up with a, a lot of intellectual reasons right. as to why they might not work out. He likes to stay home. I like to go yeah, out. Nonsense. I'm I'm bad with money. He's good with money. Well, look, uh, that's that's all good. That's yeah. checks and balances. Yeah, I mean, that'll it, work its way out. If he had it, that all would look good to her now. But uh, he ain't flipping the cookie. Yeah? Yeah. All right. What should she do? Wait. Postpone? Postpone. They got the marriage set for next month. Uh-uh. Put it off. Mm-hmm. Say, look, I'm 21. I can't just can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Guys don't take that that Fine. Hard. Yeah. Guys might be relieved at 21. What's that? Was oh, he snoring? <laughs> oh, well, Christ's sake. Oh, All right. Our guard's say. snoring again. Hold try on. It? I'm going to try this. Not exactly the greatest radio. Just, we might do a little narration of what you're doing. Oh, he woke up? Oh. Was he awake now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. But don't tell me he was snoring and now he's awake. Because now I'm. I'm, I'm Okay. You know, I was poised to pounce. I'm like a puma who's poised to pounce. Wait a minute. I'm wearing a shirt that says puma on it. And you got to pee. Sweet. Yeah, I'm poised to pounce and pee like a puma. Right, should we take a break? Yeah. I'm now scared to go out there. <laughs> you didn't tip him off, did you? Okay. We're going to take a little break. When we come back, we'll speak to uh, Jesse, female, 15, Virgin boyfriend has pierced penis. What? She's a virgin, and her boyfriend has a pierced penis. Wants to know if it'll hurt her after this. This is Tommy and Pamela Lee, and you're, and you're listening, listening to, to Love, Love Line, Line with, with Adam, Adam Carolla, Carolla and Dr. Dr. Drew. Drew. All the sexual information you could possibly need. Yeah. <laughs> Those were the days. Yeah. <laughs> Happier time. That's right. Phone number for Love Line: one eight hundred L O V E one nine one some forty one. In here tomorrow night, and let's get back to the phone. See if we can't save North America. Jesse. Yes. You're fifteen. Yeah. What's up? Okay, well, like, you know, like, I'm a virgin, and I'm sort of thinking of having sex with my boyfriend, but he has his, uh, like, his dick pierced. Uh-huh. So I'm just, How old is he? He's 18. Uh, what's the hurry? Come on. You're calling from Sunland? Yeah. That's trouble already. Well, thanks. Oh, that place is a pit. Yes, it is. The people in, in North Hollywood and Van Nuys laugh at people in Sunland. They think they're high for living there. A lot of meth around there, right? Yeah, generally. Okay. Well, I'm far protected because I went to a Catholic school for nine years. Is this guy from Sunland? Nope. He's from Altadena. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I could go either way. He's too old. 18. And you're too young. Yeah. 18 with a uh, Johnson piercing. He, what, kind of, what kind of piercing does he have? Um, right now he has a frenum and a Prince Albert. Uh. He wants to get another frenum. Um, for Why are you attracted to a guy like that? What do you find attractive with a guy like that? Oh, he's sweet. Sweet. He has uh, he he has two piercings and he's going for a third on the on the dork. Yeah. Yeah. I that's guarantee this guy's got problems. Yeah, that's not sweet. That's, that's no, well, he's a sweet guy, but he does have problems. With you, Jesse. Well, hold on a second. Anderson's got to drop that because she said um, she's kind of debating. I mean, you know, going with a Catholic school. Uh, upbringing and everything, whether she should F him or not. <laughs> she said the whole word. What is up with her? Yeah. Hold on. I gotta yell at her. Honey? Yeah? Are you high? No. You think you can just use the F word on the goddamn radio? Sorry. Yes, you should be. Alright, now I'm told our guard is asleep again. <laughs> this really turned into more trouble than it's worth. Okay. I don't trust this guy. Now I'm wondering about you. What's up with you? Well, nothing. I'm straight edge and a virgin. And okay. No, but what? What? Your uh, dad around? Oh uh, yeah. Is he a biker? No. 
Has he been a, a, He's a, a graphic artist. Aha. Uh-huh. Is he unavailable to you in some way? Mm. Does he make you angry? Not really. Not Th- really. Does he do a lot of drugs? No. No. Don't graphic artists do drugs? Yeah, well, that's not it. Well, it, I guess the question is, is he doing advertising or is he doing a Yes record albums? Advertising. All right. Do people know what Yes is anyway? No. I see. He does advertising. All right. Are you mad at him? Not really. What, what, what is the hesitation? Well, like, I don't know. He sort of favors my older sister. Ah. Uh-huh. There we go. Ooh, payback so, time for yeah. Daddy. Yeah. Got a guy with a uh, couple of barbells through his door. Time to pay him back. Jesse? Well, whatever I, you do, make sure he wears a condom. He has to wear the special condoms that you get at the piercing shops that are reinforced. You've got to have that. Okay, but, like, there's also this other problem with him, because he was in a mental hospital for a while. Oh. So. Hey, guys, are you listening to this with daughters? Pay attention to them. Do you understand? This is what you get. All the Catholic school in the world is not going to keep him away with a guy with a barbell through his door. And committed for a few months. Yeah. Jesse, yes, I, I'm What's telling you, I'm telling you now that this this is going to haunt you. This move with this guy. What's the plan? Going to marry him? Well, probably not. But yeah, probably not. No way. I don't want to get married, actually. Good. Yeah. All right, you you can't just find a guy who's you know 16 and goes to your school. Did your parents fight a lot or something too? Um, my parents yeah. are like somewhat divorced. They're yeah. separated, but not divorced. Or yeah. Do they really fight a lot at one time? Sort of. A lot. Well, my mom's sort of an alcoholic druggie. So. Ah. Okay, mm-hmm. there we go. I said, there's some issues here, Jesse, and, and they're not going to be solved with this guy. This guy's a history of mental instability. He's got a ton of problems. He's going to take you with him. Okay? And you're at a crossroads. You're 15. So just know that. You, there's no way you can handle this at your, at your age. And, and look, this is the kind of guy that you have sex with him, you break up three weeks later, and he takes he's stalking. a uh, yeah, he's stalking. dead possum and puts it uh, on your door with a uh, dagger through it. Well, maybe not a possum, but you know what I'm saying. Brian? Hey there. Yeah, you're 21. Yeah. What's um, up? I know, y- well, okay, here's the deal. You're virgin? <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, how'd you know that? I you can tell the voice. Yeah. You- I- are good. Yeah, I don't care what the age is. I mean, here Brian is 21. Now, what percentage of 21 year olds who call this show are virgins, Drew? Rare. <laughs> I think five, ten, four, two percent. Two percent yeah, well, Under five yeah, percent. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yes, it's very low. I heard three syllables out of Brian's mouth. I knew he was a virgin. <laughs> very uh, comment. Very good for you. Thank you. Yes. What's um, up? Okay. Well, here's the deal. I think that I'm a homosexual. Mm-hmm. But and I know I know you. Well, I know you frown upon junior colleges. Oh. Yeah. But I just graduated from one, and I'm moving to a four-year university. Wow. Yeah, I know. Shocking. Isn't that crazy? What are you? What's your ethnicity? I'm Caucasian. White guy graduating junior college in two years? Crazy. I don't believe it. No. You know, what I think it is about junior colleges is that um, some people just mature faster than others. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm serious. Like, some people settle down and are smart, and some people take a while, and then they get around to it. All right. Well, yeah. one, one, of the, um, one of the success stories. From the junior college system. But a virgin. Okay. <laughs> but anyways, okay. So I'm going to a four-year university, and they've got a pretty active you know, campus and like, liberal thought. And I'm afraid that I'm going to be confronted with like, a lot of choices you know, soon. Good. Oh, <laughs> well, but my family is very involved in the church. It's like a pretty conservative At, at the school? There. What? At the school where you're going to be going? No, no, no. They, well... So the school is about an hour and a half north. So what the hell do you care? You're you're developing a life of your own away from your family. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But and, I mean, it's it's yeah. pretty counter. It's counter to what they want. You know what I mean? Well, well good. It's payback time. <laughs> it's That's not what I say. Payback time at all. There's. I mean, I don't know what it is, but it's just like. No, you're gay. Mm. That's fine. Yeah, you weren't created in the lab or the basement. You're true gay. Do you think I should just go? Do you think I should talk with them about it before I go? Or no. What? Get a group of friends. You need a much. Yeah, they're gonna freak. Yeah, you need a supportive network of friends to fall back on if they freak out. Right. And talk to other people who've been through this, and get their input, and get support from them. And then if you want to go back and do it in a couple of years, fine. Hmm. Not now. So I should. You're not even around. clear. You're not even clear, gay. Okay? It's like you yeah, want. I mean, you... I'm I'm sort of confused about everything. Oh my god! Do you imagine what that's gonna do to your your, well, r- your I mean... ass? <laughs> Have you been with a guy before? Please no. 
No? Please. How uh, dare you, Adam? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, you're going on, what four-year college are you going to? Um, University of Michigan. And that'll be an hour and a half away from where your folks live. Yeah. And you'll live there? Uh, yeah, I'm dorming. Okay, so you live in the dorm. Here's the thing, don't make a move yet. No. Go to the dorm, assimilate into the college life, Find out, you know, get in the uh, gay groups and everything. Meet uh. a guy. Take it slow. Figure things out. And if you want to make the announcement to your parents a, a year or two from now, fine. Fine. Okay, so a year or two, like... Yeah. I mean, should I just do that, like, over a weekend or wait for something? Or, I mean... You'll know. Just relax. Okay, so Don't I should... Don't be in a hurry. Call us in a year. Sit him down in the... Co- <laughs> make an anniversary date. Um, it's probably going to come more along the times... Uh, around a time when you want them to meet one of your friends. Uh, if your parents are so anti-gay, though, why why are you so anxious hurry, yeah. to tell them? Well, no, I'm not in a hurry. I mean, it's just see, that's the thing. They are anti. I get I get the fe- I get the feeling you want them to convince you out of it. You want them to get you back and bring you back into the fold somehow. Well, it's been. I mean, it's that, not. That's it's your not, fantasy, isn't it? No, it's not. A, well, I guess maybe. Yeah, just let go of that. It's, that's it's not going to happen. Though. I mean, it's yeah, hard to, it's hard to individuate. It's hard to be separate from your family when you love them. But this is you. Mm-hmm. And it's fine. And they if they are really the good people you claim they are, they will be fine with it. Or else, perhaps they're not who you think they are, which is also then important that you individuate. But let's not drop the bomb on them yet. No, Go not get you, established in not college. To individ- not you're far enough out that if they do freak out, you're fine. You're whole. You're that's, separate. That's right. Brian? Yeah. Dad's going to freak. Brian, you're 14. Yeah. What's up? They're going to do an exorcism. Um, really? That, that's what I meant. Me. Flash it through my head. Yeah, um, I I was over at my girlfriend's house just this night, you know, mm-hmm. or the other night, and uh, I and I was I was hard, and I just stuck it inside of her, but I didn't I I didn't ejaculate or anything. Jesus, even even just that at fourteen changes the voice. Yep. Yeah, I surprised myself. <laughs> Listen to that. He's fourteen. Yeah. I, I think she's listening right now. Uh, uh, our last caller sounds younger than. Yeah. Brian, and who who knows what Brian sounded like before he did this? You put your penis in something. Yeah, he he yeah. Uh, he probably sound like uh, Georgette from Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that one. <laughs> yeah, only Drew knows. Was that Betty that White? Means. No, that was a, which one was Georgette? It wasn't oh, Betty White. I, I remember the weird voice and stuff. You know what yeah. I love about you? You can really just cramp on a very good reference. Mm-hmm. That was uh, Ted Knight's girlfriend go ahead, go with the it. real squeaky. Yeah, I remember the squeaky voice. <laughs> no, squeaky was really it was really squeaky. All right. Anyway. Uh, yes, yeah, so you want to know if she's pregnant? If she could be, yeah. Yeah, she could be. Well, what should we do about that? Morning after pill. How Where long How long ago did you do this? Just the other night, one night ago. It's only been 24 hours. Planned Parenthood, 800-230. What, what, hold on, let me, can I, I'm going to write this down. Are you a leaker, Brian? Uh, do you leak what? semen? Not, no, I don't think so. Well, you can't tell, though. Who knows? 230, P-L-A-N. It's been sorry. Should have got that earlier. That's all right. I like the guy talking to himself. P L A N. P L A N. Area code 800. 1800? Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. All right, sweet pea. Check right. it out. Go with her. Thanks. All right. Bye. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> you love me, Brian? Yeah, you too, Adam. All right. Bye. Say say love you. I love you too, Adam. Now just go love you. Love you. Okay. I well, love you too, man. All right. Let's talk to uh, Sam. Sam? Hello? 14? Oh, hey. What's happening? Uh, I wanted to say that you're freaking like, oh my God, dude, you're my idol, I swear, dude. Who, me? Whatever. Yeah, both of you guys. Hey, I love you, Sam. You, I, I swear, I, oh my God, I want to marry you guys, I swear. Yeah, yeah that's that'd be great. Threesome. <laughs> wow, can you imagine that's us with Sam, what a, life, what a life that would be, Adam? Yeah, you watch Sam, uh, I'm going out, Drew. No. Yeah. We're to, we got to stay together. Oh, really? The three of us, All man. Right. Put the car seat in the Jeep. Okay. Let's go. All right. All right, Sam, what's up? Okay, I wanted to, first off, I wanted to ask, um, whatever happened to that guy who farts on demand? How can you guys We had a couple him? of those. He hasn't called us back recently. Maybe we changed our hotline number or something? Yeah. What, what is his name, Tyler? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anderson remembers. <laughs> All right, yeah, if you fart on demand or mm-hmm. on command, mm-hmm. call this show because uh, I miss that. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that up, Sam. What else? Oh, and I wanted to also say... Uh, <sighs> yeah? Remember that one guy who wanted to kick your ass a lot, like a year ago or something? Yeah, I remember him. Because he got all mad? Yeah. Whatever happened with that? Nothing. I don't know. What was that all about? Nothing. 
It's his disgruntled caller. Yeah. I told him to bring it on, though. He chose not to. Uh, oh, I was rooting for you. Well, thanks, Sam. Oh, anyway, my question is, um, I was with this girl like five months ago, right? Mm-hmm. And then I broke up with her, and like she keeps calling me, she's obsessed over me and stuff, and like she like she keeps trying to talk to me, and I keep telling her like to leave me alone, but I don't know which way, like I don't know how to like just tell her to like just like leave me alone, you know? What What have you told her exactly? Like she called today, right, when I was sleeping, and she woke me up, so that pissed me off. So then she's all, oh, you said this and that, and we were together, and I was all, uh huh, I don't care, uh huh, uh huh, okay, uh huh. Uh-huh. And I was just saying, like, just, like, trying to get her to leave me alone. And then she goes, so do you want to talk to me about it? And I was like, no. And I just clicked on it, right? Yeah. But she keeps calling me, like, over and over again. And I don't know, like, really what to say to her. All right. Do you know when she calls? Can you not pick up? Mm-hmm. Huh? But she even, like, writes at me at school. And- oh, with the S word. Poor Anderson over there. He's trying to look at the internet porn, and you idiots keep using the S and the F word <laughs> on the air. You're driving the poor guy nuts. And Anderson, what does it sound like, by the way, when uh, you dump the uh, call that does that thing? It's just blank. It's dead air. For how long? Just for however long I hold the button down. But for that one word or for the whole? If I'm good enough, I'll just get the one word, but right. sometimes I have to hold down a full sentence. Okay. So should I just quit talking when you do that? Yeah, it'd be great if we quit talking and just hung up on them immediately. I see. All right, well, I did that. Thank you. Yeah. Really, really I, I think fully uh, one-third of this show is uh, done. <laughs> Uh, under the dump button. I'm not even sure how much of it gets out over the well, air so anymore. Much of, so much of what you say has to get dumped. Yeah. yeah. All right. You're lucky I'm tired, Drew. Yeah. Sam, uh, don't talk to her. And uh, thank you for worshiping us. But we got to take a break. I'll be back in a minute. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam, that's Drew. We're gonna hop back to them phones. Jesus, I'm tired. Two nights in a row I went to the man show and then uh, came here, you know? I like to, I like to <laughs> pop home. Oh, I see, you didn't go home. Oh. I leave uh, in the morning and uh, sometimes I don't make it back home again. So it's a long haul. It's tough, too, you know, sitting around, throwing a Nerf ball. Farting. Not only farting, but thinking of fart-related jokes. Yeah. And then in here to make fun of teenagers. Yeah. It's a strain. It's quite a lot. Takes a toll. Karina? Yeah. You're 15? Yeah. What's up? Um, hi. How are you doing? Good. We're good. Okay. Yeah, my question was for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um, I was wondering how long is the effect of acid? How long does it last up to? It's very unpredictable. Some people get a locked-in syndrome where it goes on for months. Oh, for real? Yeah, sometimes. those people are called lightweights. No, yeah, sometimes, but most uh, at least you know six, four to six hours. Oh, it does because I, least. I, because I heard it leads up to like eight hours or something. Sure, it can. As I said, it can go for several months. Oh, for months. It can go for months if you get one of the locked-in syndromes that sometimes occurs. Oh. Did you take acid? No, this is my first time taking it. I'm going to take it on Saturday. One of no, the things okay. we know for sure is that under the age of fifteen, when your brain is still kind of developing, it yeah. can cause damage. What are you going to do when you take the acid? Um, well, it's because we're going to be at a party. Oh, okay. Well, so we're going to, like, yeah. You, did, you, did you hear what I said about damaging the brain? Yeah, I heard. No. Yeah, a lot of friends told me about that already. Yeah, is that a concern of yours? Huh? Do you do you understand that you are your brain? Yeah. Okay. No, I just I just wanted, um, I was just wondering. Yeah. That's all. Well, here's the, here, here's the problem, the way I see it, Karina. Yeah. You have two possible outcomes. You could throw up, freak out, and really have a bad trip. Which would be good. That you won't do it anymore. Or you could really enjoy it and then just do it a lot and really just sort of fry your brain. Yeah. So those are the kind of the two scenarios. And they're both bad in their own way. Oh, and I also was wondering if oh, okay. you take acid and yeah. you're like really depressed, does it lead up to like you could like try to kill yourself or something? It can make depression worse sometimes sometimes what why why are you so detached you're not listening to anything we're saying no i am listening okay well maybe we're saying karina you shouldn't do the acid you're you're 15 yeah give it a little rest have a wine cooler or something (laughs) have somebody blow some weed in your face or something (laughs) i'm telling you in in girls are much more likely than guys to freak acid mushroom freaks out women 
Did you know that, Drew? No, didn't know that. You take a group of... Uh, I, I did mushrooms once with a uh, bunch of guys yep. and one girl. Girl went AWOL. Yeah. Freaked out. You, you guys aren't as strong mentally, you know. <laughs> you freak easier. All right. You do. Just don't do it. Listen, we, I, you're obviously not hearing anything we're saying because we've given you a half a dozen reasons that it's dangerous and not a good idea. And I understand. I'll, I'm going to think about it twice before I do it. All right. Think twice, then do it. Okay. And Adam, I wanted to say you're really funny and you're just, you're, you're gorgeous. I am. Huh? Well, thanks. And uh, I don't want to sound too preachy here, but one of the reasons I'm funny is because my brain works pretty good. And even though I did my best to damage it, you know, with football and boxing and stuff like that, I never did any, any drugs before the age of 18. I waited for my brain to dry, then I proceeded to damage it. And that's what makes me such an incredible intellect now. All right, Karina? Okay. Well, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Good times, baby. Right. Good Bye. times. All right, let's talk to uh, Julio over here. He's calling from uh, Tijuana, Mexico. Julio? Oh, hi. Are you calling from TJ? Uh, yeah. Do you live in Tijuana? Mm-hmm. I didn't know they let people live there. I thought they just bust in uh, whores and pimps and drug addicts. But they actually live there. Yeah, I was born here. Wow. How, hey, you know, uh, you know my favorite street there is that Revolution. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's got some good clubs there. It must be like living in Las Vegas. You know, they live in their little community. It's Mexican Las there's Vegas. There's this thing off there somewhere that they never go to. Yeah. Viva Tijuana. What's your question? Yeah, man. Very funny. What is your question, Julio? Okay. Um, well, I go to Scouts. To the Scouts. The Scouts. Boy Scouts? Mm-hmm. The Boy Scouts. All right. And, well... You're gay. True. Please. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I met um, a girl in Mexicali. Mexicali, right? Mm-hmm. And, well, we started talking to each other, and then we started dating, and now she's my girlfriend. But, well, this weekend I'm going to, well, to her house. Mm-hmm. And one of her friends told me that maybe we, we're going to um, uh, have sex. Right. Is that what you want to do? And I'm not really sure about it, but... No, just don't do it if you don't, you're not sure about it. You're 15. Relax. Take your time. She's probably not sure about it either. I bet. They're just saying that just to... to, to Stir be, you up see, a little. Seem cool. Well, well if, she, if she tells me, then I'm going to do it, man. If she wants to have sex, you'll have sex with her? Mm, yeah, but yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure what to do, man. You know how to do it? No. Maybe... It will finish before it even starts. So That'd be good. That'd be fine. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, listen, you need... Um, I was just looking up at the screen, Julio from Tijuana, Mexico. I just said it sounded like a joke call. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if you're from Tijuana, I guess your name should be Julio, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, do you have a condom? No, I'm going to buy some. All right, you're going to buy some. And uh, if you have sex, you want to know what to do? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, no, no, don't tell him. So no, maybe, don't tell him. Less likely to do it. If he's yeah. he's going to rupture her eardrum if mm -hmm. I don't tell her all tell right, him what right. to do. All right. All right. I'm, I'm going to tell all guys this. Hang on. He's got a bad phone line. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> Mexico. What a shock. I'm going to tell you guys how to have sex. You got to. First off, the hole's not on the top. It's it's kind of <laughs> almost on the it's the bottom. Right. I didn't know that. Uh, good, yeah. I thought when a woman stood up, the whole face straight out. <laughs> like, you know, you could put a flagpole in her and it would stick <laughs> straight out. Oh, my God. But the whole, it faces toward the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you got to kind of get your fingers going in there a little bit and kind of find uh, where it is and uh, work it around a little and get the juices flowing and all that before you just uh, have at it with your penis. So you got to kind of get down there and well, explore a how little. How about the, the cuddling factor and all that that, that women actually are looking for? You got to do a little cuddling and, um, you know, a little uh, taking it slow and a uh, little rubby rubby <laughs> and, you know, my carpet bombing uh, technique. For the oral sex, for that. Oh, well, now who knows exactly what he's supposed to do? Let's go. All uh, right, might employ, no, but uh, just uh, take it slow. <laughs> that's what it sounds like when I do the carpet bomb. Um, but I don't think Julio should have sex. No, I think he should slow it down. Yeah, a little cuddling. I agree. Maybe a handy. Nick. Yep. You're 16. Yep. You can fart on command. Yep. All right. Now, here's what I'd like to hear out of you, Nick. Mm -hmm. 
I like to hear it going in. Oh, you like to hear the end part? I like the end before it goes out. I like my friends like the end part too. Yeah. yeah, that's a big crowd pleaser. Mm -hmm. I like the part where see because people who can fart on command suck it in. Yep. And then spit it out, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So can we hear that? Okay. Right here it goes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good one. Yeah, it was solid. That was the end one, too, huh? Yeah, we could hear the end. That was <laughs> he's, fantastic. Hey, he's impressed himself. <laughs> Nick, you, mu you must really be a hit over there at the high school. Oh, yeah. Ladies love this. Football camp, it was pretty fun. Oh, yeah, you went to football camp? Yep. And you did that in and out fart thing? Get the laugh. Uh, yep, yep. Yeah, I would have been a, a ma I still would be a maniac if I could do that. Do you have to get any kind of weird position or anything to do this? Well, I used to have to have my legs up, but then after yeah, that's a while, what they. Remember, the other guy was talking about that too. But yeah. now, now you can do it standing up. Yep, I, I got more skilled at it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Now, who says you uh, don't don't know skill? Didn't pick up a skill. Nobody. L let's uh, let's hear it one more time, there Nick. Thanks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Drew loves that. <laughs> My phone smells. <laughs> Nick, what position do you play in football? I play DE. No, defensive end. end. Oh, yeah. my God. You're yeah. a big guy. No, actually, I'm pretty small. I just got speed. All right, he's got wheels coming around the corner. Mm -hmm. Well, you hit Jet the weights, powered. you bulk up a little, and uh, we'll see you on varsity next year. Go. All right, Nick. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> and call back any time. Okay. You want to give him the hotline so, number? A pleasure talking to your ass. You do. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't know. Anyone give him the hotline? <laughs> no. <laughs> Damien says no. All right. Okay. There we go. She says, I got something coming on myself. Right, right. right. Is Nick still there? Hey, Nick? Yep. Did you hang so give me one more. I'm going to see if I can do one with you. There we go. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Nick, I let a big one fly right when you were gone. Good job. Yeah, we we're simpatico. We're now brothers. Yeah, that's good. All right. Even Nick's like, all right, jackass, get over it. 16. 16. Hey, mine was pretty good, though, right? I'm proud of you. Thank you. We'll be back. Well, there you go. Our staff's still on with Nick. Trying to figure out uh, his ass. Laughing hysterically, but they're, they're on with him. Huh? Well, there, there are always some doubters, you know? There are people, um, well, they didn't believe uh, Jesus Christ when he uh, turned the uh, water into wine. And World was flat. He parted the Red Sea and um, uh, forgave some whores. I right. have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's true. I'm going to go home and talk to him. <laughs> And then uh, before, after you masturbate, and when he takes a shower, that's when I whack <laughs> off. He can't hear me. So until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Doctor Drew saying, "Mahalo." So you're religious. Well, I am, but I mean, I'm not like, oh, praise the Lord, thank you. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.